Hello, my name is Alaric Taylor and welcome back to our series of videos in which we look in detail at the Langmuir Blodgett process. We're once again in the Adaptive and Responsive Nanomaterials Lab at University College London and we will be taking a three-dimensional suspension of nanoparticles and trapping them as a two-dimensional layer at the air-water interface. It's important to have a pure suspension of nanoparticles in a suitable spreading solvent. There should be no unbound polymers left over from functionalization or synthesis or indeed any excess surfactants. The presence of these unwanted materials may well swamp your measurement of surface pressure. If in doubt, perform dialysis on your nanoparticle solution. Wait, did you just hear me say spreading solvent? This is conventionally an organic solvent such as chloroform, which helps to spread our particles on the water's surface before evaporating, leaving behind just the nanoparticles or molecules of interest at the water's surface. However, for polymeric nanoparticles, which may not be compatible with such solvents, we sometimes use an ethanolic aqueous solution. In these situations, the alcohols in our spreading solvents will diffuse into the subphase bulk, marginally affecting the surface tension of the water. Today, I'll be using an aqueous suspension of polystyrene nanospheres mixed with three times the volume of pure ethanol and these gold nanoparticles suspended in chloroform. It's almost time to form a monolayer, but first, a few quick tests. This is what happens when you add an aqueous suspension of nanoparticles to the surface of water without any alcohol in the solution. Most of the nanoparticles are lost in the bulk subphase. However, if we add ethanol to our suspension, the reduced surface tension of the solution will encourage interfacial mass transfer across the surface of the water and not into the bulk. The monolayer formation process for solutions of nanoparticles in chloroform is somewhat easier to achieve. If we gently bring the droplet into contact with the water's surface, then the same interfacial mass transfer effect we saw with the ethanolic suspension of nanoparticles can take place. You can see here the spreading solvent blooming from the droplet site before evaporating from the surface, leaving behind gold nanoparticles trapped in two dimensions. We are using a KSV NEMA alternate trough manufactured by Biolin Scientific. We fully expand our barriers and check the water surface is still acceptably clean by performing a fast isotherm, as described in our previous videos. Before doing anything else, zero your surface pressure reading and then begin monitoring the surface pressure change over time. We can now slowly add our solution to the interface. As you add material to the surface, keep an eye on the surface pressure. As a starting point, it is generally sufficient to add a volume of solution to the interface such that the surface pressure stabilizes around one millinewton per meter. Keep a note on the total volume of solution you've used in order to induce this surface pressure increase. Now it's time to record a compression isotherm. I'd recommend compressing the floating monolayer at a rate that is proportional to the remaining surface area. For example, a reduction of 5% area per minute. The isotherm signature for each monolayer material is different. Here we can see several transitions for our polystyrene nanospheres from a two-dimensional gas all the way through to a solid phase when fully compressed. You will need to make depositions at a variety of different surface pressures in order to obtain the optimum monolayer packing density for your individual solution. We'll cover the mechanics of making these depositions in our next video.